Oh, it's time for another math. Easy solution. We're going to discuss the second derivative test. Basically, look at the second derivative affects the shape of a graph and also look at concavity and show what it is and how what, what concave upwards, downwards are, and inflection points, and etc. So, let's we'll start off with uh, let's say you have a function that looks something like this. Uh, you have two kind of functions, one like this. Yeah, something goes like, like this right here. And then uh, versus, let's compare it to one that's uh, something like this. Where it's uh, it's always increasing, the same as the other one, but it, it's going down like this. So, it's, so we have these two functions here, we'll just call this f of x. This one's also f of x here, there's a different function here. But as you can see from these ones, uh, both of these are increasing. And from the first derivative test where I showed before, this is uh, the derivative is uh, greater than zero. The second, yeah, the, the first derivative is greater than zero, or that it's always increasing. But as you can see, the shape looks different. And that's because, well, if we look at the slope here, which is a tangent line, as you can see, it's greater than zero here. And, but as you can see, it keeps increasing. It keeps increasing on this one until it gets almost vertical here. So as you can see, we could say for this one, f prime of x is increasing. But if you look at this one, the derivative of the, at this, or the slope, if you see this one, if you draw a slope here, and as you can see, if you draw a slope right here, as you see, it's decreasing every time. So it, it, decreasing as in it's uh, becoming more horizontal here. Now it's, it's almost horizontal here, and then as you can see here, we could write that f of x is decreasing. And then uh, from uh, from the shape of this one, it, it's concaving upwards. It's just concave, just means something like that. So this one is called concave upwards, is whenever the, the derivative is increasing. So concave upwards. And in this case here, this one is concaving downwards whenever the, the slope is decreasing. Now, uh, now from the, the graph, you see that this fx is increasing, it's concave upwards. And similarly, if it's decreasing, it's concave downwards. But then now if we look at what this actually means in terms of second derivative, well, let's, let's write fx first. If we have fx, then f prime of x, we know that this is just the rate change of the slope or the derivative. I mean, yeah, rate change of this function. So it goes from there to here. So basically, this is a change in rate of uh, this f of x, and then so f prime of x, I mean f double prime of x is just going to be rate change of f of x. I mean f prime of x. So as you see from the this one, the the, the first derivative is just the rate at this is in, uh, this is changing, and then the second derivative is the rate change of f of x. As you can see, this one it's increasing and this is decreasing. So then from here we could see that if f prime of x, of a double prime of x is uh, greater than zero, this means it's increasing, then it's, uh, this one is just concave upwards. This one is just over here. And if it's decreasing, if the, the derivative is decreasing, or f double prime of x, which relates to the f prime of x, it just means if it's less than zero, then this is concave downwards. Now before I get to the, uh, the second derivative test, let's look at the inflection point, what it is first. This is important. And the inflection point is basically the point where uh, the concavity changes from upwards or downwards uh, and then to, to either upwards or downwards. It's, it's so where it changes. Yeah, so where graph changes concavity, what do you mean? What I mean by this one is if you just had a quick graph like this. If this one is, say, concaving uh, downwards, and then it changes to concaving upwards, as you can see here, the slope is decreasing, decreasing, and then it's all of a sudden increasing. So at, at the point where it changes, this one we call this one, um, let's call this P, this one is the inflection point. This is uh, also similarly if you have it something like concave uh, downwards right here, and then it and then it makes it, and this is concave upwards to downwards, and this one is downwards to upwards. And this one, uh, if it's where it's changing, as we know this one here at this area, it's a concave downwards, so then f prime of x, f double prime of x is less than zero. Then at here, this one is f prime, f double prime of x is greater than zero. So then flexion points where it changes, or where, uh, basically where, yeah, f, 
f uh, of double prime of x is equal to zero. So this is where the inflection point is, and that's where we can find it. Okay, so now that I've gotten through the above, now we can get to what the second derivative test is. And now, the, what second derivative test is is just uh, it's a way of finding out, determining what the local max or min is. Just a way of getting local max and min. Yeah, so just a method of determining local max or min. And uh, first starts off if you have a if you know that the, the f double prime of x is is continuous in near c. What I mean by near, let's say c, where if you were to graph it out something like this. Yeah, so you had a function like this. So this is c right here, where the derivative is zero here. Where yeah, we know that f of uh, c is zero. So basically, at this c point here, if this if the second derivative is continuous around uh, near c, so just around uh, around here, so between these, just anywhere near it, then what the second derivative states is is well a. It's the first uh, the first statement in the second derivative test is if f prime of c uh, the first derivative is zero and f uh, double prime of uh, c is is greater than zero, then you have a local minimum at c. And conversely, for b is if you have f prime of c is equal to zero and f double prime of c is less than a zero, then you have a local maximum here. And then, uh, well, f this one is a, this one deals with part a. As you can see, just looking at this one here at c here, we know that number that the second derivative is the rate change of the slope. So near it here, we if we draw a tangent line, this is the derivative here, and it, as you can see, it keeps increasing. So this one is greater than zero here. F pr double prime of uh, x is greater than zero. And then uh, even on this side right here, when you look at over on this side here, you can see that this one is, uh, the slope is really high here, but it's negative here. And it's becoming less negative. So as you can see here, um, f double prime of x is still greater than zero because it's becoming less negative, because f prime of x is becoming less negative. Or another word is just increasing. It's increasing until well, this one is becomes this is where f prime of c is zero, then it starts getting increasing, the f of x. But then f double prime of x is always increasing in this case. And then similarly, if you were having it like this, if it was less than zero, then you would just have something that's concave downwards here. You would have something like this. If this is c f prime of c is zero. And then, as you can see, it's uh, less than zero here. So then the slope is becoming less and less. Here, and it keeps going down. And because this one is, uh, this is the slope, it's really high right now, and it's leveling off or it's decreasing. And then all the way here. And this one, uh, f double prime of x, is less than zero. And then, even similarly here, it's really negative here, but then it's becoming. Yeah, more and more steep, but in the negative side. So this one is also f double prime of x is less than zero. Well, that's all for today. I'm going to do another video on examples using uh, second derivative test. Just didn't want to do it here, didn't make the video too long. But you can also uh, download these notes now on the Dropbox link in the info below. Pretty useful. It's to download. You can also follow along the video with them and whatnot. Well, that's all for today. Hopefully, you learned and um, stay tuned for another math easy solution.